Hello folks, in this video I'm going to cover the basics of using physics within Love2D and how we can quickly create colliders that interact with each other and optionally respond to gravity. You don't need anything to get started with this, any Love2D project will do, even a brand new one. If you're following along with my Love2D basics series, this video provides some extra information we need to cover before continuing on with that. Now for physics, there's a module for this built directly into Love, and it is very powerful. Unfortunately, that means it's also complicated. But there are open source libraries out there that make working with physics a lot easier. The most popular is Windfield. You can find a link to this repo here in the description. Windfield provides a bunch of really easy to use tools for us to use that make getting started a lot quicker, and your code will be easier to write. I personally use this library for all of my games, even though it has been archived recently. It is still fully reliable with the latest versions of Love, and it really does make a huge difference. To get this code included in your project, you can either clone the repo if you know how to do that, or you can go ahead and go to code and download the zip. Then you'll just want to extract the folder. And then inside we want to find this Winfield folder that's right next to the readme, so go ahead and copy this. And then navigate to your game project folder. In my case, I'm using a brand new project for this demonstration. It's just a main.lua file. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it libraries, since I always put my open source code in a libraries folder. I'll go in here and then I'll paste in that Winfield folder. Now go ahead and open up your main.lua. And for this demonstration, I'm starting with an empty file. So to start, I always put in the load, update, and draw functions like I did here. And the first thing we'll do is import that Windfield folder that we just copied into our libraries. So we'll do that with wf equals require. And then in these quotation marks, we'll do the path to that folder, which was libraries slash Winfield. Keep in mind that we are importing that whole Winfield folder, and it's going to be put into this wf variable. And now that that's imported, we can use it to start working with physics. The first step to working with Love's physics is to create a world. So I'm going to say world equals wf dot new world. A world is simply a space where physics objects exist, and we use the world to actually create our objects. Like for instance, let's create a player object. Player equals world colon, and we'll make it a rectangle. We'll say new rectangle collider. Then these parentheses accept a few parameters. The first is the position that we want our player to start at. So I'll put them at position 350 for X and then 100 for Y. Then we want the width and height of our rectangle. I'll make it width 80 and height 80. So now our player is a rectangle collider and it's being stored in this player variable. And when I say collider, I'm referring to a physics object that exists in our world. Part of what Winfield does is it makes colliders so easy to work with. Normally with the standard love.physics library, you'd need to define a body, a fixture, and a shape, and then keep track of everything separately. A collider from Winfield though is a combination of all three in one place, making it so much simpler. Before we save and run the game, we should add two quick things. First, we want to add world colon update. So this makes sure the world is updated and all the physics gets updated. Then in draw, I'm going to put in world colon draw. Now what world colon draw does is it draws the shapes of all of the colliders in our world. So I'm going to go ahead and save and run. And there it is. This rectangle object right here is our player collider. It's not doing anything though. One thing that we could do is give this world some gravity. This new world function right here actually accepts a few optional parameters the first two of which is the gravity definition. So if I do zero, let's try 100, this would be gravity going downwards. This is the X value for what our gravity is, and this is the Y value. So since we just have a positive value for Y, positive means going downwards, so all of our physics objects should be affected by a downwards gravity. So if we save now and run, we will see that our player collider is now falling downwards. It was falling pretty slowly though, so what we could do is bump this 100 up to 500. This makes the gravity more intense, therefore our player falls at a faster rate. Not all objects need to be affected by gravity though. Let's demonstrate this by creating a platform for our player to land on. 
We'll call it ground and we'll do world colon new rectangle collider. And its position, I'll put it at 100, 400 is its position. And then the width will be 600 and the height will be 100. So if we were to save and run now, we see our ground, but it also falls with gravity. In order to make the ground less prone to gravity or ignore gravity altogether, we need to change its type. We can do ground colon set type to static. So if we save and run now, our ground is static, meaning it is not affected by gravity and the player lands on it. Just now I mentioned that there are forces that you can apply to colliders. Let's make our player jump by using an impulse. So down after all of this stuff, I'm going to put in a function love.key pressed. And in here, we're going to check to see if key is equal to up, meaning we press the up arrow key, then we will apply our impulse. We're going to say player colon apply linear impulse. And the impulse we will apply is zero, and let's try negative 5,000. Now a linear impulse is just a quick force pushing on the collider. In this case, we applied a negative y value being applied to the player. Since this negative 5,000 is in the y position, that's going to push the player upwards because negative goes up. If we save and run, when I press the up arrow key, the player does a little hop because we are applying that linear impulse. There are lots of other actions you can apply to a collider. Let's make the player move left and right by using a force this time, as opposed to an impulse. So we'll do this in our update function, and we'll tie this to the arrow keys. We'll say if love.keyboard.is down, and we'll say left, so when the left arrow key is pressed, then we will apply a force. We'll say player colon apply force, and we'll do negative 5,000 in the x position this time. So it's going to move us to the left. And then we'll say else if love.keyboard.is down for right. And in this case, we will do the same thing, apply force, but we'll do positive 5,000, which will move us to the right. And that should be enough if we save and run where if I press left, I start moving left, and if I press right, I start moving right. I kind of slide along the ground. The thing to note about forces, though, is that they keep stacking and growing more intense, which is why the player accelerates so much when moving left and right. If you wanted to limit this, you could only apply a force if the player is not already moving at max speed. We can close out of this. So we're going to apply this force here only if the player needs it to get to the max speed. Otherwise, we don't want to apply it. Otherwise, they'll be going too fast. So first, to get the player's actual speed as it is in this frame, we can do local px, comma, py equals player, colon, get linear velocity. And this function here is going to grab the player's velocity and put its x value in px, and its y value in py. So now we can check the px value here to determine if we want to actually apply this force. So here on this line, I'm going to say, and px is greater than negative 300. So we'll make it so that negative 300 is the max speed that we can go. So we're only going to apply the force if we are below that threshold. Same thing for the right, we will say, and px is less than positive 300. So we're doing negative 300 for the left direction, moving left, and positive for the right direction. Also, to make things a bit more snappy, I'm going to change this 5,000 here to 8,000. That will make us accelerate a little bit faster. So if I save and run now, if I hold left, I move left, and if I hold right, I move right. But you'll notice that I don't end up going too fast like I was doing before. Overall, though, this game that we created just now could be the start of a full platforming project, and we were able to set it up pretty quickly. The GitHub page for Winfield provides tons of helpful information about working with physics. I highly recommend reading through it. For the next video, I'll be taking the concepts discussed here and applying them to the top-down styled game from the previous videos, and showing how to generate colliders from tiled. If you found this tutorial helpful, please leave a like on the video. That helps me out a lot, and if you'd like to see more game dev content, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.